What's up guys, it's JZNES back again with another video. Today we're talking about Life is Strange. Because Life is Strange. And it's episode 2 of Life is Strange. Uh, what is it called? Out of Time. Um, yep, so today we're talking Life is Strange, episode 2. Uh, my friend Banana and I just got done playing it. And, uh, it's, uh, pretty good. And it, this is kind of where Life is Strange sort of starts for me. Uh, not that the first episode's not great, but there's not a lot of the big drama and stuff and issues to deal with in Life is Strange Episode 1. Um, there's, a, there's hints at that. You know, you get Chloe and her situation and whatnot. Spoilers for Life is Strange, by the way, uh, and for Episodes beyond episode two and before episode two and before the storm maybe and maybe fucking life is strange too no there's no way i can spoil that because i haven't even played it yet anyway so we're gonna do some spoilers um but anyway so yeah so my friend and i my friend banana and i just played through episode two um and episode two is, is a really great episode of life is strange they're all great episodes but uh this is one of definitely the better ones uh i mean they're all they're all fantastic it's kind of hard to rank them but this is this is a really good episode of life is strange um there's a lot of development between max and chloe's characters here and their bond and their relationship but also there's the seeds to grow of things like frank and um and mr jefferson of course uh spoilers 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 mr jefferson and David, and, uh, and Nathan, of course, and there's the seeds of, uh, well, there's a whole big, the, the big part of the episode is Kate Marsh, whether or not you realize it at the very beginning, um, and I, I think you should realize that because a lot of the early part of the episode is based around, uh, Kate and, like, erasing the, uh, the link and whatnot to the video, which uh, katesvid.com used to be um, a real website that you could go to and it just showed like a screenshot of a video and you can't really click on the video or you couldn't really click on the video back then. Now uh, what's cool about that site is it'll redirect you to Square Enix's page for Life is Strange 2 um, to where I, I imagine when Before the Storm came out it had would redirect to that and, and uh etc cetera, etc cetera, you know but they used to be a real site with like a still frame of kate's vid supposedly or whatnot so yeah anyway so episode starts out um you are max caulfield like you always are you're max and you're uh, waking up and then you can like look around your room and stuff right and it's cool because you get to see on her desk, she's, like, been reading and watching all of these, like, uh, time travel-related things. And she's got all these theories. And she's got, like, these sticky notes everywhere and, like, these books about it. And she was even, if you look at her computer, she was, like, emailing Warren about it uh, and stuff. And, like, looking online for different explanations to her powers and stuff. I just think that's so cool. Like, that's exactly what anybody in real life would probably do. They'd start, like, looking into it trying to figure out what variation of time travel and stuff they are. I just thought that's really cool. Um, she's trying to explore the lore of her own universe or whatever. There's a cool little Easter egg uh, that's pretty kind of, kind of well hidden. If you look out your window during this time, uh, and you gotta really be looking, but Warren is kind of like peeking around the corner of the building where you find him at later. So he's kind of being a little bit of a stalker uh, at that point. So it's interesting. It's a little thing. Uh, spoilers, uh, it, uh, it kind of is foreshadowed about what Warren, what, what Max's fears about Warren is, and you can, you can definitely, uh, take their relationship in many different ways, you can deny him at every turn, or you can, um, obviously build him up at every turn, like, you could, uh, there's a part later in this, in this episode where you, um, you get to uh 
you get to say if you want to go to the movies with him or not, which doesn't actually end up meaning anything. It's just based on how he treats you uh, later on and stuff. So, yeah. But um, you get to either deny him or, or say, yeah, yeah. And you can help Warren later on with the science experiment and stuff. That's a whole part near the end of the episode. Um, it's all just based on that. Anyway, point is, there's this kind of theory or something that people notice where Max kind of has this uh, underlying like thing about Warren and, and his, his uh, obsession with Max in, in the sense. And, and this is all culminated later in another little Easter egg, which I'll talk about more. I mean, I'll, I'll talk about it here, but I'll also probably talk about it in Chapter 5. Um, in Max's nightmare sequence, if you go way off the beaten path and you find Warren's locker or whatever, it's got like all this all these pictures of Max and, like, all this obsessive shit in there. But this is all Max's, like, subconscious, like, thinking about this shit. So it's really what Max is feeling uh, was the theory about that in Warren's locker and whatnot. So, yeah. So Warren is there, out there, and he's, he's waiting for you or whatever. But it's just interesting, uh, all of that stuff she's, like, researching about her time travel powers and whatnot. Um, so... The objective then is to get the uh, shower supplies and then leave the room and then go to the shower. I think you can talk to a bunch of people in the hall there. Um, this is the moment in the episode actually where you can save Alyssa as you're walking down the hall. Somebody's going to throw toilet paper at her. You kind of have to, you know, see it and then you rewind and then you tell her, hey, somebody's going to throw toilet paper at you. Move. And then she's like, oh, thanks. Thanks, Max. You know, or whatever the fuck her voice is. Actually, there's an optional uh, photo of her at the end of the episode and she's like, Max, I'm comp contemplating shit or whatever. Like, but you can take a photo of her contemplating shit uh, at the end of the episode. So it's, that's one I, I hadn't uh, known about before. But Banana's being a, like a photo connoisseur. He's getting like all of them. And there's achievements for every one of the photos. So and that's the only achievements in this game. It's not like find all of the moment of calm or whatever. It's like it's just you know find Warren's creepy locker in the nightmare sequence or whatever. It's like it's just like nah. You just, um... Oh, this is just the, the one theme. Yeah. Anyway, um... So... Yes, yeah, so you find the shower supplies, you help Alyssa in the hallway if, if you want to, you don't have to. Uh, you go to the shower room after talking to people or whatever you're doing. You go to the shower room, and, uh... The nice thing about that guide that I was talking about last episode where it shows all the rooms or whatever is a it comes in handy because you actually have to go to Kate's room after that uh, so you, if you don't remember you just go look at the guide but it also tell you where the showers are and stuff like that so it's like oh cool like yeah for sure man like you'll always never be lost in that dorm you know you can always look at that guide and that'll be cool um so you go to the showers you get in the shower and you, well, you talk to Kate first. Kate is standing there in, in the, you don't have to talk to her, but you, you should talk to Kate because it's important that you talk to Kate. Um, but you get in the shower and then Victoria and her friend Taylor come in and start harassing Kate or whatnot. Uh, and then Kate runs off, you know, because she's being depressed or whatever. But before that, actually, before even Victoria and stuff get there, she's like, oh, I need my book from you, Max. So this is like, this is like a thing um, you have to do later in a second here. That's why I'm mentioning that. Anyway, so, you, so Victoria comes in. She's all bad talking and she's bad talking Max and stuff. Even if you were nice to her in the previous episode, she bad talks Max constantly. She writes the katesvid.com on, the, um, on the on the mirror there. It turns out that this vid is, uh, and you, you find out about this in Kate's room, but it's uh, you find out it's a vid of her making out with a bunch of guys at this party, which is, like, totally unlike Kate. Um, and later on, the implication is that she's actually been drugged by Nathan Prescott to uh, have done all of this, even though she thought Nathan might be helping her. He was actually not helping her. And I think that is the actual truth of that situation. By the way, spoilers, did I say that already? I'm, I'm trying to, to be a spoiler-free as possible, but I'm still going to have to talk about spoilers. Anyway, so I'm pretty sure that is actually what happened, but he... I, I don't know if he took her to the dark room or not, um, 
but I'm pretty sure that's where they're going with that, and the uh, the red books at the end of the thing kind of allude to that. Um, what's funny is my friend Banana at the end there said, oh, is that David Matson's book? Because he was taking pictures of Kate, and I'm like, that's actually an interesting theory, and they're kind of setting up this whole David being paranoid thing and and it's actually like yeah so i thought okay that's an interesting theory that that's david matson's books or whatever that might have been a theory i had to back then i don't know anyway so um oh, let's see what was i talking about so anyway so yeah uh victoria's all being a bitch and whatever and she writes the thing you can erase the the link which is what you should do if you want to save kate um, then you leave, then you go find the book, um, there's a little time puzzle where you, like, spill thing, spill pop on the book or whatever, and then you just, or soda, if you're not from the goddamn Midwest, I guess, or, do we say soda or pop? I just say pop, that's what it is, yeah, it's pop, we're, we're the weird ones, because we say pop. Anyway, uh, so you rewind, um, back and take the book, it's a Ray Bradbury book, either Ray Bradbury? That's, that's when we always fucking joke about whenever we play this goddamn game. Uh, and, uh, so you leave, uh, you go to Kate's room, and as soon as you enter Kate's room, this, like, fucking depressing-ass music starts playing, and, uh, the, the classic reaction to this is Matt Pat's reaction. Uh, by the way, if you haven't watched Matt Pat play through this on his, like, gameplay channel, that's, like, a really, really cool and informative and, like, solid way to watch somebody play through the game. I thought that was really a, a very good playthrough. But he's like, as soon as he gets in there, he's like, man, these are suicidal like signs all over the place. All the things that are here, the blinds are closed. Uh, she hasn't played her violin in weeks. She's got her mirror covered. Um, she's like, uh, she's like doing this over on her chair and like it's dark in there. She, she like, everything is set up to this. And my friend Banana, uh, it was it's funny because because she uh, if you look at the blinds it's like oh this is way too emo for me or something that's what Max says and I'm just like laughing because my friend Banana used to be like super fucking emo and and I even told him that and he laughed about that too because it, it, yeah because it's funny because it's just how it used to be um, but you get all of these like super suicidal vibes out of her and um, of course that culminates later on but we'll talk about that in a bit so. What most people will probably do is go right for Kate because it's important that you talk to her. But that's the complete fucking opposite of what you're supposed to do. That's the complete wrong thing to do is go right for Kate. It's actually better if you snoop around because you get to find so many clues for later on. And if you weren't paying attention to those clues, you're going to fail pretty hard later on. And that's going to make the difference. That's actually going to be life-changing for Kate. That's either she lives or dies. That's life life or life or death on, on you paying attention to those clues or being a good guesser at the end there. Um So yeah. So basically you're supposed to pay attention to the Bible verse. She has one scribbled out and she has one that she uh has on there and that, that one that she has on there and is not scribbled out is one of her favorite Bible verses, as you'll see later. Um, you're supposed to pay attention to who's actually supporting her in this moment, which is her father. Um, because later on, you get a choice also um, of her father, her sisters, her brother, but she doesn't have a brother. I'm um, pretty sure, anyway. Her sisters. Does she have sisters? Pretty sure she has sisters and not a brother. Um, one of them, she doesn't have. And then her mother, who's actually just being mean to her in her, in her like letter or postcard or whatever the fuck it was. Um, but her father is the only one being supportive, and that is the key to one of the answers later on. So, you, uh, if you look at all of these things, this will put together a good picture for you of what you need to know to get Kate to not commit suicide later on. But most people don't pay attention to that and they go right for Kate. And I've seen this so many times because I've seen myself, uh, Jameson, John, 
and uh, Banana. And I've played through it a bunch of times. And I've seen a bunch of playthroughs of the game to where people make different things. But a lot of... Out of all of them, the only time I've seen Kate survive was... believe was in um pretty sure it was it was in Jameson's playthrough it was the only time she survived or maybe it was John's play no I think John didn't save her somebody didn't save her I didn't get to save her the first time because it's really very hard to save Kate and I honestly think how oh, I'm getting so sidetracked here because this is like this is the big top I'm just gonna talk about it now so I honestly think that saving Kate is actually bad for the emotional impact of the story. The spoilers. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. I'm gonna spoil episode five. The whole point of not saving Kate shows you that your actions have consequences, that you can't always just rewind and change everything for the better. Kate dies. That creates a whole through line for the next few episodes of an emotional impact and it actually makes for a better reason for you to go after like David and, and Nathan and stuff is because Kate and she died and that's like you're getting revenge or whatever you're trying to um, avenge Kate or whatnot but if she doesn't die then like what's the point like you know okay you're still trying to figure out what happened but it's just not as impactful I would say also, just the emotional baggage and, and the emotional thing and everyone at Blackwell, there's, there's candle lights and stuff. There's like stuff ever, everywhere. Everyone is mourning over Kate and it, and it just feels so much more impactful, I think, that way. So, I don't know. I think Kate should die on your first playthrough and if you want to see her live on your second playthrough, that's great. But if she lives, it's just less climactic. And also... Of course, it's meant to parallel the choice later at the end of the game. Spoilers. At the end of the game, where you have to choose between Chloe and Arcadia Bay, it's meant to uh, parallel that choice in a sense because either Kate dies or lives. It's, it's, a, it's an early version of that. And of course, there's the one in episode three or four. I think it's actually in episode four. Where you get to also choose, it's like a it's like a mini version of the the Chloe choice at the end, uh, where you know you get to choose Chloe's fate uh, when she's sick or whatnot. So, all that aside, let's keep continue talking. So you talk to Kate, you get a choice to either tell the police or investigate for more information. Now, if you, if you say you want to investigate for more information, Kate brings up, like, five scenarios later on during her, like, on the ledge there. Um, she brings up when you call her. She brings up you talking to her or something like that. She brings up you taking the picture or not taking the picture. Oh, sorry. I thought this was a different song. Anyway, taking the picture or not... Or stepping in or, not, or taking the picture with David. Um, a few other things like that. She brings up some stuff. And that's that's a few of them. So anyway. Um, you could choose to side with her. And she kind of tells you about the scenario. Like Nathan. Or like something happened to her. She she like blacked out. She thought Nathan was helping her. When, when he was actually. You know. Just being creepy. And uh, essentially he was probably the one who drugged her. Or whatnot. So, yeah, so Nathan, not, not good. <laughs> so anyway, so you get to talk to her about that for a while and then you, you, you put the book on the thing and then you can leave. And then from there, you go out into the courtyard. You have a ch uh, chance to talk to Taylor, uh, who is one of Victoria's friends. And there's a thing where you have to rewind and talk to, talk to her about her mom. And then you'll have her on your side a little bit more. Uh, if you do that, um, you can talk to Samuel, who, you know, is, is funny. And he, he's a little bit creepy, too. And I've heard some people say that he's kind of, you know, maybe as creepy as, like, 
Warren or David or something like you know he just he's got weird stuff but he's just he's just a little odd he's a little different uh, but he's like talking about spirit animals and stuff and like okay you know like hello young Max or whatever <laughs> like you know it's just strange but like life is strange <laughs> so <laughs> anyway um say so yeah, you can talk to him and then uh eventually you got to talk to Warren and this is when you can make that choice about going to the movies with him or not and um yeah so then um after that what happens after that let me see it's a good thing i have this fucking video pulled up I'm trying to remember what, what happens after that so uh right so after that you you take the bus and you're like you go to the two whales diner or you go to that area with the two whales diner there's a nice kind of scene on the bus, and there's there's a thing that parallels the thing later. I think it's in episode four when this happens. But there's the bus driver does this like nod, and, and you know you notice it's some guy you don't know. But later on, you uh, you get to see that again in an alternate universe with David as the bus driver, and and he does the nod, and it's like oh my god, like wow, this is a parallel to that moment. It's so cool. So um, yeah, they play that. Uh, what, what song do they actually play here? Let's find out. Yeah, yeah, Crosses. They play the song Cross. Yeah, so that's that's a great song, uh, of course. Um, and it, it's very uh, symbolic of that situation. And then, okay, so you get to the the um, the area right before the two whales there, and there's a lot of things to see there. There's like a lady there. She's like late for her bus or whatever and and she's like asking about the bus schedule and you can talk to a guy who's like i'm gonna be a millionaire i've got the winning lotto ticket right here and it's like okay yeah sure sure dude sure um you can like go see you can see frank's rv again and you can see uh that there's like your drawing is still there if you drew it before um pompadou will will bark at you if you try to go back there um to talk to frank or whatever so setting up frank again um, it's like an asshole guy, and then there's the homeless woman who uh, there's this theory, which is I think is a great theory that the homeless woman is a Max from an alternate universe that kind of is older, and she's kind of gotten stranded and lost in time, or whatnot. Uh and she's ended up this homeless woman. That's why she's like, I've seen Arcadia Bay for like a thousand years and from all these different perspectives. And she knows a lot about Nathan and like all of this stuff and like about Max and stuff and about Chloe and whatnot and Joyce. Um, and she kind of looks like uh, looks like Max a little bit too. Um, go check out Geek Remix. Uh, this is originally why I subscribed to their channel. Their, their playthroughs of these games are really good too. Um, but their theory videos about Life is Strange are really, really interesting. And that's what I love their channel for is those theory videos. They don't really make that often, but they make them when the games like are new. And, and that's what was always cool was just hearing the theories. And one of them was about the homeless woman being Max in an alternate like future timeline or something, which is pretty cool. And I think that's that's a really neat theory. And I like that one a lot. Um, and you want to talk to that homeless woman because later on, um, she'll have either died there if you didn't talk to her, or if you do talk to her a few times, she'll like actually leave town before the storm or whatever. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, so yeah, so you can do all of that. There's some more references on the license plates and stuff. Um, you go in the two whales. You can talk to a bunch of people there. You can talk to the cop and talk to them about. Uh, about Chloe and David and, and a bunch of stuff like that. You can talk to a few other people. There's this Canadian lady there. Oh, a hey, a hey, everything a hey, you know like um, you change the music if you if you want to do that on the jukebox there. When you sit down, you get a choice between uh, waffle and uh, or an omelet. And my friend Banana chose the omelette. I usually choose the Belgian waffle because that's what I always order whenever I go to, like, uh, Village Inn or whatever. Because I fucking... 
Above a Belgian wall. What the fuck is this? Huh. I don't remember this song. There was some song that was playing in Victoria's room that I didn't recognize either. So apparently I'm not a, like, a Life is Strange, like, full music track aficionado. Are all these songs just, like, licensed fucking songs? This, these videos are gonna get you, like, copyright struck. There's no way. Anyway. Um. Not that I'm making money off of these anyway, but... Sponsored by Raid Channel Legends. No, it's not at all. Not at all. Um. So anyway, point is, um, eventually you sit down at the at the booth there, and you can uh, Chloe will come in after a little while. Uh, you you have a conversation with Joyce, uh, which I don't remember how it goes. If you like didn't take the blame for the pot or whatever, like. It's a whole different thing. I think it's about him hitting Chloe or something. Like, I'm pretty sure that's where that goes with her. Because I've never seen, like, the one where you step in and take the blame. But, but like, everyone says about this game, like, that, that your choices don't impact anything. But they impact your your the dialogue severely. Like, it's a whole different dialogue if, if you fucking make different choices. Like, I think that's really cool. Sure, they don't impact the ending much, but that's not the point. The point is about the experience of the game, and you're impacting that based on your choices. People will constantly bring that shit up. That's the actions have consequences thing, not the ending of the fucking game. That's not the... whatever, you know, like, who cares about that? The point is the journey. And they even, like, fucking make that dead clear later on. Uh, right before you have to make the final choice by showing you that montage of Chloe and Max and stuff. So, there you go. Like, that's what the game is about. It's about the experience of the journey, not the fucking ending. It's also about the ending, sure, but that's... The ending is about the ending, you know what I'm saying? Alright, so, um... Yeah, eventually Chloe comes in, and then, uh, you have to, like, predict what's in her pockets... You just kind of have to guess the first time, which is, you can't actually guess correctly. So then she'll empty out her pockets, um, and then you get to examine the contents. Banana took, like, a really good look at the contents, and he knew exactly everything about them. Um, so, so he pretty much passed that the second time around. And then there's a thing where, like, this, this events happen, like, Joyce, one of, one of the guys drops a mug... And Joyce gets mad about that, and then it's like, the policeman's partner leaves, Trevor and, and, and Justin get in a fight, and a cockroach goes onto the, uh, under the, the jukebox, and, uh, you have to predict all of that, and tell that to Chloe by paying attention to the surroundings, showing that you have time powers then. Um, so she starts freaking out about that, of course, that you have the time powers, which is good, and then, um... What the fuck is this? Um, where, where does this play in the game? I want to know. Hey, girl! <laughs> what the fuck is this shit? Anyway, uh, so... Who's playing this song in the game? Who's this playing in the game? Anyway, point is that, um... So you predict all this shit. Then, as you're about to leave, Kate calls you... And if you don't take this call, it's bad for you later, but Chloe gets all pissed off that you're taking the call. It's really not that bad of a scenario, but, like, I guess she gets in a fight with Joyce for a second while you're on this call. But it's important to be there for Kate if you want Kate to survive. Uh, so, you know, you can take her call or not, but that's, like, a choice that you get. Um, and Chloe will give you shit if you, if you take the call. And if not, I don't remember what happens, because I always take Kate's call, because it's fucking Kate Marsh. Um, then you leave, then you go to the junkyard, you get you get this fucking assignment to go get bottles so you can, like, shoot them with the gun or whatever. And this is, like, one of everyone's, like, least favorite part of the game is collecting the bottles. But I don't mind that part. I like going in the little hideout and then, like, seeing all this stuff with Rachel Amber. Uh, my friend Banana, like, somehow guessed from that letter that Chloe's a lesbian or whatever, so, like, cool... I mean, I guess that's neat, or what, whatnot. Um, I don't know how he guessed that, but from that letter, because it doesn't have anything to do with that as far as I can tell. But anyway, so he guessed that. That's kind of interesting. Um, 
there's a part where you can like write your name below um, below Rachel and Chloe's name and then you just basically explore around there's a part where you take a picture of the uh, spirit dough but it doesn't like show up on the picture so it's like okay is, is Max just seeing things or, like what's with that um, there's a bunch of little things everywhere it's a lot of little things to see and a lot of little puzzles there so that's a pretty cool area of the game um, and then you get to set up the bottles and there's a lot of different little puzzles where you have to tell her to aim certain directions, aim at certain things. There's one actually where if you, I think it's the bumper. If, if, if you tell her to shoot the bumper, it'll actually come back and ricochet and like shoot her in the chest or whatever. And Chloe will die, which is, is, is funny, uh, because of, I mean, it's not funny. I mean, it is kind of funny. But it's sort of showing you that there's so many times where Chloe is going to die uh, with it, with with or without your help. Um, Chloe is meant to die. So it's like the universe's way of correcting it a bunch of different times. Obviously that bullet and then later on after that um, you go towards this train track and you're walking on train tracks and laying in the train tracks. That's a terrible idea, by the way. Um, and they're discussing everything. Um, actually, that's when Frank comes and takes the gun, or doesn't take the gun if you, like... I don't know if he always gets the gun, I don't remember, but... But Frank comes, and he harasses Chloe about the money or whatever. Um, so they set up all that. Anyway, so you have the option to shoot Frank or don't shoot Frank, and, and either way, the bullets... There's no bullet in the gun, you've used them all on the bottles. So, uh... But he's gonna, he'll remember kind of that for the future and go easier on you or not based on whether or not you uh, were going to shoot him. So they're laying on the train tracks. Chloe gets her legs stuck in the train tracks as a train is coming. Dumbasses are playing on the train tracks. Don't know why. That's the stupid part. So then... Um, you have to save her. There's a few different ways of doing this. There's a way to roll the barrel down, uh, this like barrel of stuff down, to uh, to knock in front of the track. Or I think it knocks the sign thing or the the lever thing into gear. Um, you can break into this this building and get this uh, with a crowbar. You have to find the crowbar. You break into the building, get the pliers. You open up the little box next to the sign and cut the red wire. And that'll work. Um, but there's like another way too. You can like pry Chloe free, I think, or something to that effect. There's a few ways of doing that puzzle anyway. Um, but the train running her over, another sign that she's meant to die kind of thing. Um, so you kind of have to. And there's there's little things everywhere, like in her room and, and, and um, on the bathroom. And, and, and like in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, the hideout there. There's a little thing that says, I want to die, and there's, like, one in the bathroom, that, or, or there's, um, there's something in her room that, like, says something similar, like, oh, there's one in the bathroom that says, just let her go, or whatever, and there's, there's some, some other stuff like that, um, around, like, in her room and stuff, all little subtle hints that Chloe needs to die, uh, in order to, for things to, to continue on and the universe and the storm to be corrected and whatnot, but we'll get into that more later. Um, so, yeah, you save Chloe from the train and then you get out of there. What, what happens after that? I'm trying to think. Uh, is this when you go back to school after that? Alright, so we got the diner, bottles... You shoot Frank, you have to play it on the train tracks. Yep, so this is when you go back to school. So there's a few things you can do here uh, when you get back into the school. You can talk to the principal, and if you didn't tell him the day before, you can like tell him what's going on then. Which I don't know what that does, because my friend refuses to tell anybody what Nathan Prescott uh, has done. To protect himself or something. I don't know. Anyway... There's um, a part where you can talk to Courtney, which is another one of Victoria's, like, Goonies, 
uh, and she'll get you on a list for the Vortex Club party, which becomes really helpful later on in Chapter 4, um, if you do that here. Um, you can also talk to David Madsen, and he'll kind of apologize for whatever he did yesterday, whether it be about the pot or it be about hitting Chloe, etc., etc., and you can kind of state your case there and get a little bit more of a sympathetic side of uh, David's character. Um, after that, Warren will text you, and you can go help him with his little science experiment. You can get the right answer from Miss Graham. If you didn't go with him to the movies, you can actually get Brooke to go out with Warren and set him up or whatever. Um, there's a part with Kate, and she's walking away from Mr. Jefferson, and you can rewind and see kind of the whole thing and listen in on that, which is interesting. Um, you can do the same thing with Mr. Jefferson and his phone call, just like keep listening even though he says like, go on into class or whatever. It's just kind of a weird phone call. I, I, I still don't even know who he's talking to. There's some, there's some theory about that too, if I remember correctly. Anyway, so um, you help Warren with this project, or don't, you know. And the, Miss Graham has the real answer. You can, you can like, choose the two answers that Warren will have on his initial dialogue, but the real answer is you have to go and ask Miss Graham. She'll tell you that you actually need chlorine, which is not potassium, or uh, sodium. Um, yeah. And there's a few optional pictures you can get in there and stuff. And then... Um, so as soon as you do all that, then you can go into the, the classroom. Victoria and Nathan will be waiting for you at the thing. This is also where you can get that optional photo of Alyssa that I mentioned earlier, by the way, where she's like, I'm contemplating shit, Max. Go away, or whatever. Like, um, I don't know who did her voice, but it's just the fucking most stupid, hilarious voice. Anyway, so uh, you can uh, you talk to Nathan and, and, and Victoria, and they're like, they're, like, giving you shit about stuff. Um, then class starts. Warren comes in. Well, Warren comes in before class starts. He talks to you for a minute. And then Mr. Jefferson comes in. And he's like, everyone who's not in my class, get the fuck out, basically. And uh, he starts his, his class as usual. And um, then eventually uh, one of the guys comes in. And is like, oh, there's some shit going down in the girls' dorm. So you rush over there. And then uh, you see Kate is uh, jumping off the dorm, and see so rewind, and then, um... Oh, by the way, cool little thing about this is, as soon as you enter that area, before you can even see Kate, before you even go around the corner, um, like where you met Warren earlier, that building, before you can even see the dormitory, uh, where Kate is, and where she's about to jump off, you can hear the music, the same depressing music that was played earlier in her room, so it's a nice little subtle thing to tell you, like, hey, this is Kate. And this is her feeling bad right now. And this is a problem. Actually, right before that, um, you can look out the window and you see, while well, Mr. Jefferson is talking. Oh, here's crosses. Anyway, while Mr. Jefferson is talking, you can actually see David Matson taking pictures of Kate. This is why my friend thought that maybe that was related to that. But anyway, so. <laughs> Sorry. Um. <coughs> Shit. <clears throat> something stuck in my throat there so um yeah so anyway you see Kate jumping Max puts out her hand and rewinds and then she does it a second time and then she realizes that she can't keep doing it because her nose is bleeding and she's in like pain and it's and, and that kind of stuff and then she like freezes time and so she goes up to the roof and then time unfreezes this is where you have to talk Kate off of the edge uh, and is a lot more helpful if you did all of the right things you get off a lot easier if you're trying to save Kate which fucking the first time around you shouldn't try to be save Kate because it'll make for a better more emotionally impactful game um, um so yeah but and you can also fuck up a lot on the dialogue and that'll also put Kate in a bad spot, but the, the point of, of this part, um, aside from the point of what it's supposed to be, the emotional impact of Kate dying, and you realizing you can't stop fate in a lot of ways, and some people are just kind of meant to die, or whatnot, um, 
this is a moment where Max's powers start to fail for the first time, and she can't really just rewind because she was using them so much earlier with Chloe and the frivolous stuff that she can't use them for the important moment uh, where Kate's dying. Um, so, yeah. And, and so you can't use your powers to rewind any of your choices uh, during the Kate section, which I think is a really good choice, and it's teaching you about how some things are really permanent in this game. And how your choices really do make a very big impact. Especially these choices are going to make a very big impact. Um, so either you'll you'll succeed with that and you'll talk Kate off the ledge. Or you'll fail at that and Kate will jump and she'll die. And uh, that's kind of my preferred way. Because that's way more emotional and impactful like I've been saying. Um, and then after that you'll get um, a thing where you get to blame one of three people. You get to blame Mr. Jefferson, you get to blame David Matson, or you get to blame Nathan um, for uh, what happened to Kate. So you can tell, you can tell them that uh, Nathan dosed her. Um, uh, David Matson uh, was harassing her or, or taking pictures of her, that kind of thing. Or that Mr. Jefferson was the one who made her cry right before this whole thing. And he was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. Now, that's the one my friend went with. Mostly because of his fear of Nathan. And that Nathan would do something bad to him. Um, and I guess that he was maybe getting more sympathet set, sympa sympathet sympathetic for David. Uh, and then... That Mr. Jefferson, like I said, was the straw that broke the camel's back. But it's just it's interesting that he chose Mr. Jefferson because obviously, uh, you know, Mr. Jefferson and his shit later on, if you've played the game, you'll know. It's a very interesting one to choose him. You're almost choosing your villain at that moment, like who you think is the worst of the three. Um... But my friend Banana kind of, I think, took it in the opposite direction of that, where he was choosing the best of the three, but trying to not be in the other two's bad light or whatnot. Um, so it's just interesting. So, but he chose Mr. Jefferson. That gets him suspended from the uh, Everyday Heroes competition and whatnot, um, which is interesting. And I don't know what that really impacts as far as I'm concerned. I think that... Cause doesn't he get expelled from that anyway? I don't remember. It's, it's not a big deal. Anyway, it doesn't change that much. Um, it'll change some dialogue stuff later on and whatnot. Nathan will be less pissed at him, I'm sure. And David won't get as hard of a time about it or whatnot. So, that's what he chose. I've chosen all the different ones, pretty much. And I've seen my friends choose all sorts of different ones. But then you do that, and then that's, uh, I think that's pretty much the episode, if I remember correctly. Let's see. Uh, yep. Then, uh, then you get, uh, you get Max talking to, Clo um, not Chloe. Max talking to Warren there about the weird, there's like an eclipse coming, um, over the sun. And, and they're, they're like talking about how fucked up that is. And uh, then you get to see everyone. Uh, either he'll talk about how Kate died and how that's fucked up, or in uh, in Banana's case, he'll talk about how Kate survived and Max is like a superhero for getting her to, to come down or whatnot. Um, so, but... Let's see, what was I going to say? So, after that, you get to see everyone reaction um to the scenario of what happened um as they're watching the eclipse you can see like frank and victoria's like crying and stuff um which is interesting gives you a little insight into to her character and and that she she can actually feel bad and guilty about things like she's not a total monster you know um so so that's cool but yeah then the episode's over 
you get a little preview for the next episode where they're sneaking through the uh, the swimming pool there and David's chasing after him or whatnot. So, yeah, really great episode and a really great end to the episode. Uh, very impactful with Kate's, like, it, w it is impactful if it's, like, Kate's death there um, and all the stuff leading up to that. It's a really well executed, like, build up to that scenario in a lot of different ways. And Kate's always sort of omnipresent. Even when you're at the diner, she calls you. Um, the junkyard thing. It's like you're you're th you're still thinking about death, uh, which is sort of related to Kate and all of that. Um, you'll get like a text from her, I think, at the junkyard too. So it's Kate's always omnipresent throughout the episode because it is kind of Kate's episode. Um, yeah. So I think that's cool. Obviously, the music here is still great. Um, it's a lot of cool scenery and and um, and stuff throughout the episode. And I think it's just really good character development for all of the characters. Um, really good, like I said at the beginning, like uh, bonding between Max and Chloe here. I think it shows the power of this like decision system in terms of you saving a person's life. Um, and having to remember many little crucial details about their uh, their life and what's important to them, um, I think is a really powerful thing and a really cool game mechanic. Uh, to where you're not just snooping around, but you're just kind of really learning about people enough so that you can so you can be there for them. You know, I, th I think that's really neat um, as a game mechanic. I, don't, I can't really think of any other games that have done anything like that. <laughs> that's cool and there's a lot of scenarios and a lot of little things that'll help you be in that character's good graces and Kate's good graces or in her bad graces if you don't do certain things like don't erase the link and this and that um, so that's a really cool dynamic and duality throughout that there and it's a really good balance of like really serious stuff and then like the fun stuff with like Chloe and stuff um, so yeah, I think it's just really well executed. It's another... I feel like every episode they kind of ramp it up in terms of like emotions and like the stakes are like hired every single time and the decisions become even tougher every single episode. So it's just like, yeah, like fuck, you know, like... Um, it's just the perfect ratcheting level to the next thing after the first episode to like show you how much farther we're willing to go in this game, like... A girl was about to commit suicide, you know, like, it's crazy. I mean, I know they did it in Persona 5, but they really just felt like a ripoff of this game when they did it in Persona 5. We even said, we, we didn't even know that girl's name. We always we always just called her Kate. No, that's what we called her because of this game. So, anyway. Um, yeah. So, anyway, funny uh, little thing there, and it's just like, it's just so well executed in, the, in this thing, and it's just a really great setup to where we're going in the future. They're always building on stuff in, in, in genius ways in the story, and giving you little subtle clues and hints about the true nature of everybody, and like, who's really good, and who's really bad, and, but it's like, it's a lot more subtle. You, you, like, have to kind of notice, like, oh, wow. Like, you know, so. It's cool. It's cool. It's very well done. Uh, episode 2 is a great episode of Life is Strange. Um, and I love it. And it's fantastic. And you should, you should, I, I mean, you, you better have played this game before watching these videos. But if you haven't, you should still play the game. Because it's amazing. Anyway, so episode 2 is really great. Love episode 2. Actually, I don't know if I said this one yet or not, but... Uh, when I first got the game, my friend Nick was like, uh, when I told him I was going to play it, he's like, oh, just wait till you get to the end of episode two. And then, like, I texted him afterwards because Kate died. And I'm like, man, that's such a fucking, that's so, like, crazy and impactful. And I'm like, I don't even know if I could have saved her. And he's like, you could have, but it's not as good if she, if you do. I don't think that, like, that works as good. And I'm like, at the time, I was like, damn. And then I'm like, once I played through the game, I'm like, yeah, it actually works a lot better if she dies uh, for the story. So, yeah, anyway. Uh, 
That's all I've got to say about episode two. Until next time, until episode three, this has been Jay-Z NES saying keep it classic, stick around for more reviews on underrated games, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Jay-Z out.